So we can submit this form, but we don't have any validation. So let's go and set this up now. We know how to do this already. It's really straightforward. So to actually validate then, we create a validation variable so we can check that. We grab this from here. So we say this validator, validate, and then we want to pass now request so we can actually get our data. And then we have an array of our validation rules. So we have password old, and we have our new password, which we've just called password. So for the old password, we will say something like no white space. Now, of course, I've been using no white space, but you might want to use her, uh, white space in their password. So feel free to miss this one out. Now, what we also need is our matches password rule. Well, that's a custom rule. We'll deal with that in just a moment. So for the new password, again, I'm going to say no white space just to keep these in sync. And we don't want this to be empty. So we now know that we can check if the validation fails. So if validation failed, then we want to redirect back to the previous form. So we return our response with a redirect, grabbing that from our router, the path for auth.password dot change and this looks good now otherwise we'll just kill the page and say change password great so let's refresh perfect so remember i said earlier this just works like magic because we put the work in earlier to set this up now this just works really nicely so now that we've got this all set up what we want to do is look at our custom validation rule before we go and look at actually updating the user's password because we're going to do this in a slightly different way so how would this work? Well, of course, like I said before, if you want to add any custom validation rules, we need to add a rule and we also need to add an exception. So for the rule, this is going to work slightly differently. We're going to actually take in an argument. And by this, I mean matches password and we're going to insert the user into here. So we're going to do something like this auth user. Now, why are we doing that? Why don't we, in our custom rule, just grab the currently authenticated user? Well, what we don't want to do is tie this rule down to a particular user. This, you know, it's just a general rule. There might not be a use case for anyone else updating this, but if we do say, well, we can leave this out and just here check the currently authenticated user, that makes it really hard to uh, for example, if you, you know, this wouldn't happen in real life, but if you had an admin panel and you wanted an admin to change the user's password, you might say, ask them for their current password to validate it, uh, in which case the user wouldn't be able to because this rule would fail. So we're passing this in here because we know that later on we can pass in any user we want and it will not be, will not be tied down for to the currently authenticated user. That's basically it. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's get rid of this for now, build the rule, and then we'll implement it in. So for the rules, then let's create a new rule. And this is going to be matches password.php. And we can copy over our email available rule. So let's go and change this to matches password. And in here, of course, we need to do something, eventually just return true or false. So to be able to pass anything into our rules, all we do is we create a constructor. So it's simple as that. So in here, all we do is we take in either the user object or the password. Now, actually, it would make more sense to take in the password here. So let's just grab that, set that into a property up here. And now what we can do is take that password and we can check it. So rather than doing what I said earlier, this, we're going to do this instead. So we're going to say password. So we're going to use the password property on the currently authenticated user. That makes a lot more sense. And then this is kind of a general rule and we can use it elsewhere as well. So how do we actually verify this? Well, of course, we use the password 
verify function, which we use to check the sign in. We take the input, which is the plain text password, and we take the hashed password that we're passing into this rule. So now that we have this, we of course need to set up an exception in case this fails. So with the naming convention, this would be matches password exception. And of course we can just copy this over from here as well. Makes a lot more sense. And here it will be matches password exception. So here, what we can do is just say password does not match or anything you want to say. Okay, great. So we've got our rule set up. We know that this will return true or false. Now we can see if this works. So again, we use matches password, same name as the class. We grab the currently authenticated user. And then from that, we grab the password property. So this should now work. So over here, let's click change password. Must not be empty. That's fine. Remember, my current password is just the plain text password. So I'm going to type in something completely different. I'm going to type in some other password, hit change. Password does not match. Great. So now I can enter my real password. I'll change my password over to something like cats, hit change password, and we get that die with that message. Great. So now that we have set up not only our validation, but our custom validation rule, we can move over to actually changing the user's password.